In this video, I wanted to talk about how to create invoices. So I have this example file here, and I will have a link in the description that you can download a zip file, which will also include this notepad file along with the sample file. So here I have a scenario here that I want to track a company's repair job. So I have a customer table, which will have all the customer information. Service table, which has order ID, service date, the customer ID, because I don't need any of the other information of the customer because I have a relationship between them. So the services they are using, the brand, the model number, and the labor charges up here. And along with that, each service will have lots of parts associated with it as they are being repaired. So the parts will be tracked in the parts table, and the order ID will be related, and the part and the price. Along with that, we also want to track what money the PEEP customers has given up front, somewhere down the line, or there are some more things need to be taken from them, even if their product's been taken home. So there I have order ID again related, so that each order ID's payment are tracked accordingly, and then the payment dates. Okay. So the way this will work is that I'll create two different queries. One query will include service order and parts, and I'll create a report on that. For that query and I have a separate query for payments and then I'll also have a report for that and the second payments report will be added as a sub report the first report so that's the basic idea of this I'm just going to close this and I'll also show you how to use DLOOKUP to pull up information like the customer's first name and last name in your report even though you don't have it in your query so I'm going to quickly create a query for table service order create query wizard Simple query, add order ID, service date, customer ID, I'll also take labor. The rest I can pull up as I need it. And I also want to add the parts to this. So I'll go to table parts. I'll add the parts ID. I don't need order ID because it's already there. Part and the price. Next, next. And I'll just give it a name. Query service parts. I can go to modify and hit finish. And for the order ID, I'll just say, put a bracket, enter order ID, so that it will prompt me for a, with a question. So there it is. So for order ID 1, I get this. I go back to design view, run order ID 2. There is only one part associated with it. And I can say yes. So that's my one query done. I can go to table payments, create query wizard, because I've clicked on it and I click OK here, it will show up there, or else you'll have to choose from the drop-down button. Add all the fields, next, next, and I can just call this Query Payments. I could have just done um, a, a report based on the table, because there's only one table in the query, so it may not be that important, but that's fine. So now I have both of my Queries. Now I'm going to create a report based on this. I'll start with query payments, create report wizard, add all the fields, next, 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 leave things as they are, most of it, and up here I'll just say RPT payments, and I'll hit finish. Okay. So here's all my payment. Even though it's showing me order ID 1 and 2's payments, once I add it as a sub report to my other report, it will only show me that particular orders. So I'm just going to close this. And in the design view, I'm going to click on amount. This is my detail. This is the label. So I want to do a summation. So I can click on this here and do summation. So there is the sum of it. I'll click here. And when you click on property sheet, you'll get this option here. And there is the name here. So, you know, I can give it a name. I'll call it text total payments. So that's the name of that field because I'll be able to use it in calculation. Or I can just call it total payments here. Okay. So that's the way I know that I've got that in there. So I can use that name in a calculation. Save it. I can run it. And here it gives me total, which includes all the three payments of order one and order two. So I'll close this. I'll go to query search service parts. Create, Report Wizard, I can add Order ID, Service Date, Customer ID, I'll leave the Labor ID out, just for now. 
you can add it but I'll just show you a different way of adding it next now here I want it to be set up like that because it's two different tables rather than it all in one line because my parts will be many so they can be listed one after the other next 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 I'll make this block because what it will do if I don't make it block say if I had 10 parts each line will repeat the order IDs date and the customer ID which I don't need I only want it to be on the one line and after that I only want them to be listing the parts I click next and this I can call it my report invoice because this is what that's going to be report invoice and I can click finish and it's going to prompt me with that question and I'll enter one so I only get that so I'll close this now and I'll just modify this just a little bit and make room quickly so I'm holding the control key to select the second field I can reduce the parts a little bit move the parts inside the price and I'll click here on the parts ID and I can sort it so that it is put things in small to high like one two three four parts ID so I'll group it and I can add to sort and I can say parts ID and there it is and what I can also do is say if I don't need this ID number because it's what's one two three four five six so I could actually change in the property sheet in the all change the visible yes to I can change it to no so that this field is not visible so I'll click here so you see that part ID is not there because I really don't need it I need this part names and the price that's the important one come back to design view and I'll click on this price here in the detail and I'll do the summation here just like the payments and what it does is it puts two summation one up here and one on the bottom and I don't need this one I'll click on this one in the property sheet all I'll give this name text txt I'll call it parts total it's important to give it a proper naming so that it's easy to figure out the good thing is 2010 onwards when you start typing the word TX all the names starting with that will show up in the tooltip so you can find it much more easily and if I want it I can click you look use this label button and I can just add it here and I can call it parts total I see that green line what it means is it's just saying that this is not connected to this so I'll just click here and associate label with the control that's the name of that box and I'll click OK, okay. now here I also want to add labor so I go to add existing fields and I just look for the word labor and I just drag it so this will give me my labor price and now up here say I wanted to do a subtotal I want to add these two together and underneath that I want to do the tax so I'll look for this box here which says text box and I'll just add the box here and this will be my subtotal and this go to property sheet and I'll give it a name and I'll call it text subtotal in the control source I'll add the three dots click on it and I click OK equal to and so this is going to be my text parts total plus labor so so that's the total so let's see if it's doing that and also in the format I'll just make this currency come to the front so there is my subtotal of these two total there is the subtotal come back to design view I'll add another text box from here on the top and this is tax and the name in the all I'll just call this text 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 tax and then I'll start the three dot now what is my tax going to be? It's going to be the subtotal multiplied by whatever the percentage is. So I'll do equal TXT subtotal multiply by 0.13. For some reason if I type 13% it doesn't work. So there it is. 
I'll add just some more space here. So that part is done. And now I need to do a total of the tax and the subtotal. So I'll add one more field here. And I can just call this something. I'll call it service total, for example. And I'll give it a name. I'll call it text service total and in the control source use the three dots and I'll do equal text subtotal plus text tax. So that is my subtotal. Let's just check this out. Okay, and I'll just change the format to currency so that the numbers go on this side. Okay. Format currency. So if the property sheet is not there, make sure you click on it. You can also right click and find it. So there is this. Now what I want to do is I need to add the sub report so that I can incorporate the payments total into my report here. So up here I'll just add a field for now. and this will be called payments and here I need to say equal to the total of my payments so before I can do that I'm going to add it as a sub report to this form and, and the where the place where they'll go is this under this page footer section I'm just going to move this to below so I can add it here so I'm going to use the sub form sub report button and I'm going to drag it here and I'm going to look for report payments next now is what it's saying is that it's going to relate it's only going to find the query payments which are related to order ID which is what we want so that whatever the order ID we enter in the box that's the payments that should show up next next and finish okay now in here we had done the payments and I just want to get the name that's called total payments and in the notepad file that I'll be attaching to the zip with my sample file you'll see this information here along with the other things is this here. So what this is saying is that because that total payment subtotal that total we want is in a sub report it cannot be addressed directly. I could have just typed equal to and then this part here without the is error function and it would have given me the right error but by using this is error if the payments are empty you will not get an error message so that's a nice thing to have and so what I need to do is first of all up here goes the name of the payment and this is where the name of the field goes so in this case I'm calling it total payment so I need to modify this to that so the name of the report and the payments in both places so if I highlight this and I click OK and in the payments control source I'll just type that and I click OK and for the name I'll call it text payments total so let's see if this works one and there's my payment 120 which is coming from right there so that's the way we reference the information here so that's good that's done now the fast last thing we want to do is the balance so I'll add another field for the text box and I'll put the balance and in here I'll just give it a name too for example and in the control source I'll add the three dots and I'll do equal so this will be text service total minus text the payments total and I'll go to format and I'll make it currency and if I if you wanted to add lines somewhere in the middle I can take this line and hold the shift key so that the line will be nice and straight so wherever you wanted to add these lines you can click it and you can add it to differentiate various sections and whichever way, way you wanted to do it uh, I don't know if that is needed alright so let's just see what it looks like 
So there's my balance side. They owe, the customer owes me 173.80 cents. So the last thing I want to show you quickly here is that um, if you had this report invoice, I can expand this and you know you can have your company information and logos here. Now if I wanted to pull up the names of the say the customers, I can click this. I'll just make a box here and say this is my customer's first name. Now here I want to pull up the customer name based on the customer ID here. So there, this is where the ID is and the name of the ID here is customer ID. So that's the name. So I want to do that here. So do a DLOOKUP in here. So in here uh, in the notepad file you'll find this information. So the idea is DLOOKUP is that I want a field name from the table, say first name. So that's what I have here. The name of the table, the table customer. And so what I'm looking for is customer ID. Is the there is a field in the table called customer ID. And on the table, on the report itself, I have a field called customer ID. So look for first name in this table and where the customer ID is, whatever the customer ID is on the report. So I highlight this, the lookup, copy it. And I'll just go to the control source and I'll paste it in there. So let's see if this works. And there it is, John. So, you know, all the information I want, the addresses and everything, a telephone number, I can pull that here one by one. So you just have to change just one thing at a time. Instead of the first name, you change it to the last name. The customer ID stays the same. And once you set this up, when you enter number two, so if I go back and I to number order ID two, the name of the order number ID two comes up. So this is the lookup. It's just the only a simple note I want to make is, and you'll find the instruction here, that sometimes, in this case, the customer ID, which is one, two, three, it's the number. Sometimes you may be looking up information that includes text. So instead of, uh, you know, you might be looking up the first name, John. You're not looking up for an ID. In that case, you have to do something different, which is the single quotations. So you can read this. If you want to read more, you can go to these links and look at some more examples if you needed it. Okay. So I'm just going to save this and I'm going to close this. So this was the idea behind queries and reports and creating invoices by using sub reports. In the next video I'll show you how you can take this and add buttons to the form itself so that you don't have to keep on entering the order ID and it's just a very easy way for your users to start using and creating invoices for the customers. Thanks for watching.